Hello, and welcome back to the Earthbound Ancient Cave Randomizer. I have just been chilling here in the mayor's office. The mayor is Atenda, which is a small gremlin-like creature that you normally don't encounter until way late in the game, but anything is possible in a randomizer. All oh, right, the tour bus. I think it's good that Liar Exaggerate found a uh, a nice human tour bus to settle down with. Good for him. Good for both of them. So I'm still fumbling my way around uh, Tucson here. Oh, hi. Oh, I forgot to heal Mario. Crud. Uh, I... I did a life up spell, but uh, I think the battle ended before be before it could go off. So I'm going to have Mario defend. Okay, good. The teddy bear protected him. I'm trying to conserve my magic a little bit, and I don't really know why because there is a sanctuary really close to here. This is another one of those, I don't know if this is an NPC or an enemy situation. Like, by the way it's moving, I'm thinking NPC. Uh, yes he is, he's standing right behind me. Uh, she, I'm sorry. So, uh, Tucson is the town where Paula lives. Paula is the character who has been re replaced by Monty. There's Mario having a nap. And there's Question Mark having a nap. Oh, butterfly. Which I don't need because like I said there is a sanctuary location right here. But speaking of which, I wanted to come back here and do something and explain a mechanic and a way the randomizer changes that mechanic. So there is an item called the exit mouse and uh, it is a mouse, a literal uh, animal mouse, not like a computer mouse, and that uh, it's like the um, the wing of the wyvern from Dragon Quest or an escapite from Fantasy Star. Uh, it, it lets you leave the dungeon, basically. Uh, but in the randomizer, instead of uh, instead of just teleporting you to the exit of the current dungeon, which would not be very useful. You, you use it to mark a spot, and so the next time I use the exit mouse, I can use it to take me directly back to this room. Uh, and I try to use it in these sanctuary locations because, like I was saying, it's easy to get stuck in a situation where all but one of your party members are dead, and it can be difficult to return to uh, a location where you can re revive them. So now that this spot is marked, in an emergency, I can use the exit mouse to get back here immediately. Uh, and, and I can mark a, another spot later in the game if I want to. Now once you use the exit mouse, it is gone from your inventory, or, or it's gone. It's a consumable item. And you can get another one, but there are only like three or four spots in the game where, where you can acquire an exit mouse. Three, three or four places where mice live. And uh, in the randomizer, it is not as easy to get back to one of those locations because there is a lot going on and it can be difficult to, to remember where, where, where stuff is. Oh, this is one of them. Uh, th thank you, game, for providing me the perfect example. So say I step out of the Polestar Preschool and am I'm ambushed by a crow.
not really ambushed, but uh, attacked by a crow. I should. Why, why didn't I just freeze this thing? I'm going to immediately get my MP back. Okay. Luckily, Ness is doing uh, a decent amount of damage for for this early in the game. All right. Get rid of that stag beetle. So I will use my exit mouse. Go to the last spot. And it takes me back to the sanctuary location with a very ominous sound for some reason. Oh, I, I have to leave and come back in for the for the actual effect. So I do that. I get a full heal, revive all my party members. And in the randomizer, it is not typical to find an exit mouse location this early. Like often, I, like I go a really long time without using the exit mouse because who knows when I'm going to get another one. Uh, so the mouse is now no longer in my inventory. But if I just mosey on over to the preschool here, what is this? Nothing. Just uh, just decoration. So this is an exit mouse house. Please take my son along. He may look like a regular small mouse, but he can lead you to an exit if you're lost in a maze. He's a tough boy. So I now have another exit mouse. And the slot machine thinks I look helpless. I think I'm doing okay. Oh no. It's a crow ambush. They're both non-metallic. I don't think this game has metallic crows. They're all going to be non-metallic. Let's try out that fire spell. I, I know from having checked them already that they are 100% vulnerable to fire, so that should be a pretty effective attack. Ow! And Terrabang. Oh, well, Ness has to go and show off. But the fire would have hit both of the crows. Uh, ice is a single target, and fire is a row of enemies. I don't want any of your blasted stag beetles. Keep them to yourself. Maybe peck at that instead of my eyes. Oh no! Suddenly I'm in the final dungeon and everyone is robots. Massive, massive spoiler alert. Hey! So, the magic butterfly gives you 20 magic points, so I just recovered what I spent on the, uh, the fire spell. And there's a present. A tiny present. A yo-yo. Okay, well... I could give the yo-yo to Monty or Mario. Uh, it will uh, increase the amount of damage that they do. But it also has a smaller chance to hit. Uh, the yo-yo is one of those trade-off weapons where, you know, more damage, less accuracy. So that would give Monty an offense of 15. Okay, Monty, between Monty and Mario, uh, Monty has the smaller offense. Question Mark cannot use any equipment except for specialized equipment that is made just for Question Mark. And that does not show up until way late in the game. So I would have to either get very lucky uh, and, and find some of it early, or Question Mark is going to be basically naked for the whole game. Um, but which, th that's true for original Earthbound 2. Uh, Kato, uh, cannot... So, Kato can equip anything, uh, but it decreases his stats rather than increases. There are a couple items that it is worth equipping, even though it drops his, his defense to zero. Um, 
some of the other protections that they offer is, is worth the trade-off. Uh, but in general, uh, you only want to equip the Sword of Kings, uh, the, di the Diadem of Kings, the... Uh, I, f I forget what the, the body and, and the other equipment is called. But yeah, question mark. Uh, the question mark wears no clothes. Uh, but I'll, I'll equip Monty with this yo-yo and see how it goes. Although, Monty can cast spells, so maybe I should give it to Mario instead. No, not 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 the crack bat. Because poor Mario doesn't really have much to do. Um, in Earthbound, the character in the slot is named Jeff, and and Jeff is a mechanical genius. He can repair items and, and use technology that the other characters can't. Um, but he he has zero magic points and, and can never cast spells. Uh, so Mario or Jeff would normally have the spy, abil spy ability, which gives them something to do on their turn uh, when, when, when you don't want to use an item. But since Mario has prey instead, uh, I don't anticipate he will be doing very much. Uh, I will try to attack with this yo-yo, but you know who knows how well that's going to work out. There we go, 16 offense. Did that just take me to another location in Tucson or did, did I get turned around? Flutter by. That should have been a back attack. That crow was not facing me. So yeah, Mario has shoot, prey, goods, and defend. It starts you with a big bottle rocket, which can get you out of a sticky situation uh, if you encounter a tough enemy early, so I like to hold on to it. Um, don't want to do much praying. Wait, the attack option is shoot even though it's a yo-yo. I, I don't know if that's typical or not. And uh, question mark doesn't do a lot either other than cast magic because he can't equip weapons really uh, unless you find the Sword of Kings which uh, in the base game the Sword of Kings is one of those items with like a like a 1 in 64 drop rate off, off a very specific late game enemy so I very rarely bother trying to get it uh, because that involves a lot of grinding um, so yeah N Ness and Monty are going to be the the MVPs and the teddy bear of course pulling its weight that was, that was a pretty decent hit No. There is an auto fight option, so you don't have to just mash the attack button to have, have everyone attack. But I don't like using it because it can be a little finicky to cancel it if you need to do something besides attack. Okay. I don't think there's actually anything over here. Except getting ambushed by a crow. I thought maybe I could sneak past it. Mario having a pretty good hit rate with the yo-yo so far. And a, and a pretty good damage output. 
Pro V Robot. Of course, being robots is just a story thing. Uh, it doesn't change your stats or anything. Well, that was a pretty crappy level. Okay, it looks like crows... Well, one crow was afraid of me. The other one wasn't. Yeah, you, sh you should have a grin on your face. You were about to be sent to a better place. So yeah, that was a, a miss from Mario and Monty. Okay, so maybe the, the decreased accuracy isn't that big of a deal, since I can't hit anything anyway. No thank you. So once you're high enough level, the enemies, uh, lower level enemies will start to run from you rather than uh, approach you. And I can't, I can't get it to proc, but um, if you, if you touch an enemy from behind when it's running from you, or sometimes even, even if it's uh, a normal battle, um, but if you touch it from behind, it, it gives you a green swirl instead of a blue swirl, and that will give you <clears throat> give you a preemptive attack instead of the enemy. If it's a red swirl, the enemy gets gets a preemptive attack. But if you're high enough level, you just automatic automatically kill it and get the experience points. Uh, not high enough level level for these crows yet. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I threw away the previous Dag Beetle. So this was just a big honkin' dead end. I feel more relaxed. Thank you, Butterfly. Help me with peanuts. Aw, oh, man. I could go for some peanuts. Maybe not being pelted with them, but I could try to catch them. Nice hit, Mario. Not nice hit everyone else. Of course, crows naturally have a pretty high evasion stat, I think. So even even in vanilla Earthbound, they're not the easiest enemy to hit. Oh yay, a stag beetle. Wait. Did Ness literally just get like two hit points from that level? Okay, thanks, Sarcophagus. I've had quite a few underwhelming uh, level ups so far. So this is one of the scariest enemies to encounter early in the randomizer, but in this case, it's not an enemy; it's just a uh, just an NPC. Oh, it's a cat. It's a robot that thinks it's a cat. Or a cat that was turned into a robot. So this is one of those uh, shortcut areas. Um, in Vanilla Earthbound, these are monkeys, and this is part of a big annoying like item fetch sequence. So if I had a hamburger, I could I could give it to this um, bassist. Was that a base? Yeah, it's like a stand-up bass. Uh, I, I could give it to this bass player, and he would step aside and let me through. 
and then I could give one to the Loch Ness Monster next to it, and then that door would go to a different floor of the dungeon. And there's also an exit further to the right that I can't see, uh, which would, uh, uh, you know, basically this room leads to three dungeon levels. Uh, the level that I'm on now, the one that you can get to by going through the other door, and the one that you get to by, by leaving the area. But I have no hamburgers, so no shortcuts for me. Not, not that I would take them, even if I could. Um, because I'm not like speed running or anything. Uh, if I were in a race, I might try to figure out, you know, which dungeon floors would be advantageous for me to to skip. Um, and the shortcut could also take me to level nine, and I would just get immediately owned by by the first monster I see. So, oh. Well, that's okay. So this is like a, a big open air market in Tucson. Uh, there, there are people selling stuff, um, and and the items in the shops are randomized. So there is a chance that I could find something that I want to buy here, but I still haven't found an ATM. So uh, all of the money from the enemies that I've killed, uh, it, it's all still in the bank. Uh, so all I have on me is the the hundred dollars that I started with I think th I think this is still just an egg yeah so an early strat for grinding money um if you're desperate, is buy a, buy a bunch of eggs, wait for them to hatch into chickens, and then sell the chickens uh, for like 10 times more than the eggs cost. Which I might do if one of these other item sellers has something that I really want. So this guy sells the a for sale sign, which you can use to sell items like in the middle of a dungeon. Like, you, you use the for sale sign and someone will run up and, uh, and you can sell an item to them. But even in Vanilla Earthbound, I don't use it because you can only sell one item at a time and you have to wait for them to, to get to you. And it's just a really obnoxious process and, and it's not worth the time. I, if I need to clear in inventory space, I just throw stuff away. I think I'll be okay. Okay, so this is the actual item shop that sells, uh, junk. Big League Bat. Platinum Band. Fry Pan. Okay. Well, now I want to do the egg thing and, and buy this stuff. Probably not enough to, to buy the Platinum Bands. Which are like four thousand a piece. Um, so it doesn't give me the option to give it to someone else. So I wonder what happens if Ness's inventory is full. Wait, is there even a person I can sell stuff to? Can I can I sell stuff? Okay, I can. I am concerned about my health. And I have started eating eggs more. Um hard-boiled eggs. Uh a good portable source of breakfast. Okay. So now I have to wait for wait for some of them to hatch. 
Eh, he's not that scary. Do you sell stuff or just bread? Point of silence. So if I wanted to use the shortcut area, I could buy a couple hamburgers and see where they lead. Uh, but like I said, I'm not super interested in, in skipping areas. Although it can be useful to have a shortcut back. Like I know that there is an exit mouse location and a your sanctuary location here. So if I'm on a later floor and I have the ability to uh, get back here easily, then that would be uh, that would be a good thing to have. This punk is running from me. Let's see if I can auto battle. So green swirl means I get the advantage, and then I'm high enough level that I just auto automatically win. Of course, by the time you can do that, the the experience that you get from them is not really anything. Um, but at, at least it saves you the tedium of a battle that is no challenge to you which is a really nice feature it's one of the things earthbound did one of the unique things that i wish other rpgs copied so you can hear chirps now which means one of my eggs has hashed into a chick so the chick needs to grow up into a chicken and then all the other eggs need to do the same so let's explore a little bit more of Tucson while I, while I wait for that to happen. Oh, well that's good news. Yeah, Paula is very popular, but she has been usurped by Monty the Mole. Treasure. <gasps> That's a pretty good late game. Oh, wait. Is that the bat with the really crappy accuracy? Oh, yeah, it is. Like, the increase in offense makes you think that you would really want to use that but in practice like the accuracy is even worse than the yo-yo so you only end up hitting like a quarter of the time what mario he's not that bad a guy well i guess i guess he is in donkey kong jr but uh he's learned the error of his ways seeing double oh don't dress up like me cop thanks Ruffini These guys are having a bad time. <gasps> Treasure. Ooh, a travel charm. A signed banana. So that is a key item. Uh, so I will give that to question mark for safekeeping. The, the travel charm uh, I think that's the first charm that you can buy. All that really does is protect you from paralysis, I think. I, I don't think it gives much of a, of a defense bonus. Yeah, paralysis attacks, which is still good. So one another nice quality of life thing the randomizer does is you can equip something by just going to, into your inventory and selecting use. Uh, you don't have to actually go into the, the equip menu. Yeah, defense change from 10 to 10, but uh, that makes him immune to paralysis. Well, not immune. Or may maybe immune? I don't know if he's actually immune to them or just resistant. Uh, but either way, it's it's better, better than it was before. All right, so that's the department store entrance, which takes me here. 
uh, to the police station. Okay, and this is a, this is a totally separate area, um, like like a world map area. Not not that Earthbound really has a world map, but it is kind of divided into um, you know chunks. Hey, buddy, I have some bad news for you. You got crows. Eh. So let's see. Let's see if I can actually hit something with this bat. I don't like my odds, especially considering that I'm low level. That's a miss. Yeah. Let's count how many misses it takes for for Ness to actually get a hit with the KC bat. No, thank you. Oh, the, this is Ness's sister. Baseball cap. I think Monty can wear that. Oh, N Ness isn't actually wearing anything. But his defense is higher. Yeah, Ness's defense is higher than all the other characters, despite not having any armor on. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll give Monty the hat. Let Monty wear it. Okay, a couple of my eggs have, have hatched into chickens. Um, but uh, it's been long enough that I think I will cut the video here. Uh, tune in next time, tomorrow, and... See if my chickens come home to roost. Goodbye.